And all throughout the Bible, the Bible teaches, for by grace are you saved through what? Faith. And faith means believing. He said, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, not of works, not of works, lest any man should boast. Did you know there is a difference between the dead works of man outside of Christ and the works, the living works of faith brought on by grace? Satan and his ministers of unrighteousness have been playing on words since the beginning, since the Garden of Eden, when Satan told Eve, hath God said in Genesis chapter three, did God mean it that way is what he was really saying to her, making doubt. Without doubt, you can't bring in a lie. So he's able to create doubt on what words mean. If you go back and watch this playlist, you'll see the first thing we tackled was what does repent really mean? And then we went and discovered what believing really means. And today we're going to talk about what works really means and grace. And you will start to understand that there's a biblical definition, uh, a, a godly spiritual understanding of these very important words. And then there's man's understanding which is where Satan likes to work in the logic and reasoning of a man because he's blinded in his own understanding. And so we're going to try to separate those two today and get you to understand the difference between the dead works of men, which cannot save you, which is the works outside of Christ, and the works of faith, the living works of faithfulness, the works of grace that are evidence of believing in Jesus that God absolutely demands that we have in our lives. So let's get into it. And all throughout the Bible, the Bible teaches, for by grace are you saved through what? Faith. And faith means believing. And faith means believing. In part four of this series, we explain what believing really means to God. So if you, if you have trouble understanding this teaching, go back and watch that teaching because it builds upon the understanding that you know what believing really means. If you don't understand what believing means according to Jesus, you may not understand this teaching. For by grace are you saved through what? Faith! And faith means believing. Not of works, not of works, not of works, lest any man should boast. Did you know there is a difference between the dead works of man outside of Christ and the works, the living works of faith brought on by grace? First, we need to talk about the dead works of man which cannot save him. For by grace ye are saved through faith, and not of your own selves. It is a gift of God. Not of works, not of works, least any man should boast. Oh, the dreadful dead works of a man. It might help if you forget everything you've ever been taught about works and grace. And let's start from scratch with the Bible and the scriptures and praying for wisdom in your life that you will understand this. For there are dead works that man will be bringing before God one day thinking that those works will get them into heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works, many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity, work iniquity. A lot of people use this scripture to show that works can't save you, but they're missing the very important point that these were the works of iniquity and not the works of faith and grace, which Christ is looking for. These were the works of iniquity, works of iniquity. Their hearts were not founded and sealed by true faith in the Son of God. You can picture these people like the Jehovah Witnesses who deny the deity. They deny that Christ came as God in flesh. If you deny him as God in flesh, you are not getting into heaven. 
and they've done many wonderful works, built churches, uh, established uh, communities all around the country, go knocking on door to door, proselytizing, witnessing, except they're working iniquity because they're not keeping the greatest commandment work and will of God, which is to behold the Son of God, to worship and honor Him just like you do the Father. Many people, many religions, many cults who do amazing works and even cast out devils and heal people like the Benny Hinn Ministries. Lots of healing goes on because the people have faith and He Himself is working iniquity. Many people, that's what this is talking about right here. This is not talking about the works, the living works of grace, which you're going to see shortly. This is literally the dead works of man, the religious works of a man, without the grace of God sealing that person. This goes to show you how ingrained with bad doctrine we really are in our churches that we don't even recognize these biblical terms such as works of faith, works of faith. Look what Paul says, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, work of faith and labor of love. That's work of love. Works of faith has been expressed in the Bible through Paul and, the, and Jesus, and we just can't comprehend it because we're so programmed by these teachers who tell us that all works are the same. All works are not the same. All works are not the same. Work of faith and labor of love. The dead works of man and the works of faith are completely different. For by grace are you saved through what? Faith. And faith means believing. Not of works, not of works, not of works, lest any man should boast. Work of faith and labor of love. How can it seem like Ephesians chapter 2 tells us that man is not saved by works, and we know that we're saved by faith, but then you have scriptures in James chapter 2 that say the exact opposite. Check it out. Even so, faith, if it have not works, is dead being alone. For by grace are you saved through what? Faith. Not of works, not of works. Faith, if it have not works, if it have not works, is dead. For by grace are you saved through what? Faith. Faith, 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 if it have not works, is dead. Saved through what? Faith. Saved through what? Faith. Faith, faith, faith. Not of works, not of works. If it have not works, is dead. If it have not works, is dead. A man may say that thou hast faith. Saved through what? Faith. A man may say that thou hast faith. Saved through what? Faith. Faith. And I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. And I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works, without works, without works, is dead. For by grace are you saved through what? Faith. Not of works, not of works. But wilt thou know, O vain man, O vain man, that faith without works, without works, is dead. Was not Abraham our father justified by works? Justified by works? When he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar. For by grace are you saved through what? Faith. Not of works. Not of work. Seeth thou how faith wrought with his works? And by works was faith made perfect. For by grace are you saved through what? Faith. Not of works, not of works. By works, by works was faith made perfect. Faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, saith, Abraham believed God. For by grace are you saved through what? Faith. And faith means believing. The scripture was fulfilled, saith, Abraham believed God. And faith means believing. Abraham believed God. And faith means believing. By works was faith made perfect. And faith means believing. By works was faith made perfect. Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God.
Without the discernment of God, the wisdom, and the Holy Spirit, without the anointing teaching us right and wrong, and to understand the written word of God, we would think that this is a contradiction. But it is not a contradiction. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 says, For it is not by works that we are saved, but by the grace of God. And then in James chapter 2, we see that it is works that saves us because it's the actual faith that, that is manifested by the works that we do. How can it be that works doesn't save us on one scripture and that works is nothing more than faith manifested in any other scripture? How can both be true? But understand that the works of man outside of Christ are dead and the works in Christ are alive. Everything we do in Christ is not the dead works of man, which cannot save you. It's our understanding of which works is being talked about in Ephesians chapter 2. The works that cannot save a man is not the works of obedience to Jesus. When we obey Jesus, that's the living works of faith that saves us. When we obey Jesus, that's the living works of faith that saves us. So you have to understand the difference between dead works of man outside of Christ and the living works of grace through faith that come by obedience in the Son of God. By believing in Jesus, we walk in this path, and that is the evidence Paul's talking about in James chapter 2. I'll show you my faith by how I live my life. Believing in Jesus is a lifestyle of living in Him. And if you're in Him, then the works that you do are alive in faithfulness and not the dead works of a man. The dead works of a man in Hinduism, the dead works of a man in Islam, or these cults that are running around here denying the name of Jesus, denying Him as God. They think they're going to get into heaven. They're building churches. They're giving their money to the poor. They're doing many wonderful works, but they're dead works of men. Why? Because they're not abiding in the true faith of the Son. They're not doing His will, they're denying His name and thinking that their dead works are going to get them into heaven. To really solve this problem, we need to do what we always need to do, and that is go directly to Jesus and listen to what He says that we must do to be saved. What does Jesus teach about works? Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him. The same shall bring forth much fruit. Without me ye can do nothing. Bring forth much fruit is works in a person's life. Verse 6 says, If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Clearly here you can see that it is very vital that we produce fruit in Christ. We, that we work His works of faithfulness, and we produce the works of grace in our lives. If not, He will cast us into fire. Now, He also makes this very, very clear in this teaching here. Notice in Matthew 25, verse 41 and 46. Then he shall also say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord... When saw we thee an hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous unto life eternal. What Jesus is teaching in John chapter 15 about abiding in him and producing fruit, is the same kind of work that he's looking for right here. Feeding the hungry, visiting the sick, the works of love, the works of grace, the works of faithful obedience to the teachings of Jesus, producing the grace that comes from the kingdom within us through Christ's Holy Spirit.
the evidence of salvation, of being born again, the works of godliness and righteousness in our lives must be apparent or there is no salvation in a man's heart. He will be gathered like a branch and tossed into the fire. These men did not do the will of God. They did not have the works of faith and the works and labors of love to prove that they're saved. They had the dead faith of devils. Again, it is very, very crucial we distinguish the difference between God's works that he demands we keep and he that overcometh and keepeth my works, my works unto the end. To him I will give power over the nations. Keepeth my works unto the end. God's works that he demands we keep, that he demands he sees in our faith, his works, and the dead works of man, which will accredit him nothing. The dead works of man, which God rebukes in Revelation chapter 2 and 3, five out of the seven churches, he says, I know your works, your works, man's dead works, and they are not good. Check it out. Revelation 2, verse 1 and 2, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, I know thy works. Revelation 2, verse 8 and 9, Unto the angel of the church of Smyrna write, I know thy works. Revelation 2, 12 to 13, And to the angel of the church of Pergamos write, I know thy works. Revelation 2, verse 18 and 19, And unto the angel of the church of Thyatira write, I know thy works. And there's two others as well, he knows their works. And he tells the church of Thyatira, Revelation 2, 26, again, we've already read it, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him I will give power over the nations. We must keep God's works, not our own, until the end, to be saved by his grace, which is trying to teach us to obey him. We're going to talk about how grace is teaching us these things, and that's how we're saved by grace. By obeying and being led by grace, that's how we're saved by grace. And we're going to get into that later, but I want to focus on something here that a lot of people overlook. The church that he talks to, the church of Sardis, he says, I know thy works, and they are not perfect before God yet. And unto the angel of the church of Sardis write, I know thy works, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Now what does that mean, perfect? Is God really asking us to live perfectly? Actually, He is. But if we don't live perfectly, does that mean we're not getting into heaven? Of course not. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 says, If any man sin, if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. I'm not preaching perfectionism here. I'm not preaching perfectionism here. The doctrine of perfectionism, that you have to be perfect, one little mistake, and you're going to hell. Because the Bible says that you have the grace of God to cover you in that. But God's looking for perfect work. God's looking for perfect work. What does perfect work mean? It means that your works have to be done in faithfulness. In faithfulness. In faithfulness. Check out this scripture which shows us exactly what perfect works is. Check it out. James chapter 2, verse 22. Seeth thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. The dead works of a man are useless because it's not wrought with faithfulness in Jesus Christ. Faith and works wrought together bring perfection to God. It doesn't matter if we make small mistakes. It's are we living faithfully to God and producing the works of faith, the works of faith in our life, or are we offering up to God the dead works of man that are without the faith required? You have to have both, and they're not teaching that. I think it can be expressed in one simple statement. The dead works of man are the works without faith, and the living works of faith are the works with faith. You can't have one without the other. And all throughout the Bible, the Bible teaches, for by grace are you saved, by grace, by grace, by grace are you saved through what? Faith. He said, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, not of works. Again, we don't understand what grace is, 
how grace works and how it's applied to our lives and our call to work and participate in grace. We have no understanding of this in our churches today. Just like people are not being taught what real biblical repentance means, nor are they taught what believing in Jesus really means. Grace is another one of those things that people have no real, true, biblical understanding about. Grace is a gift to mankind. But you can picture grace on a mountaintop, and God is saying, come up to the mountaintop. I have a free gift for you. God is calling us to do something in our own works of believing, in our works of faith, that are going to be necessary for us to attain the grace. Let me show you what the Bible says about faith accessing grace. Check it out. Romans chapter 5 verse 2 says it very clearly, by whom we also have access by faith into this grace. We have access to the grace. We have access to the free gift. We have access to the blood of Jesus through believing and responding by faith. The kind of faith that Jesus says, do my will. If Jesus says, I have a free gift of salvation, I have a blood covering for you, it's over here, I want you to come over here and receive it, and we respond by believing him, we walk over to him and we receive that free gift. That is the most clear analogy I can give you. God wants us to believe his teachings, to have access to the free gift, which we cannot do on our own. The free gift itself is waiting for our faithful reaction, our faithful works to respond to the teachings and commands of Jesus to come and receive this free gift. Something else you will not hardly hear in the churches is that grace does not save everyone. You have to access it by your faith. We just talked about that. Did you know that you can frustrate the grace, fail at grace, the grace can be given in vain, and you can fall away from grace because your faith is not responding, because your faith is not receiving? Not everyone will be saved by the grace of God. The Bible clearly says this. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? The Bible tells us we've been given a measure of faith, a measure of grace, a measure of Christ. And we are told in 2 Peter 3.18 to grow in grace. Galatians 5.4 tells us you can fall from grace. Hebrews 12.15, you can fail at grace. 2 Corinthians 6, 1, you can take the grace in vain. And Galatians 2, 21, you can frustrate grace. What is grace trying to do? How are we saved by grace? Grace is our teacher. He says in Titus 2, 11 and 12, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, that's Jesus, and teaching, his teachings is what saves us, teaching us, to deny ungodliness, worldly lusts, that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So either we're learning from grace or we're despising grace. Hebrews 10.29 says you can despise grace. Just like you can fail, frustrate, and fall away from grace, you can despise the grace of God. The grace of God is a gift, but that gift is waiting for our faith. That grace is waiting for our obedient faith to respond to it. It is a treasure that God's giving us. And if we don't faithfully receive it, faithfully acknowledge it, faithfully work with it, faithfully obey it, then our dead faith of devils is showing how lost we are and we are not saved by that kind of dead faith. Only the living faith of works in Christ through obedient faith of God in us and the grace of God teaching us these things. It is the grace of God teaching you right now. This very lesson comes from Him teaching you godliness and righteousness and soberness so that you can be saved. How? Check this out. 
1 Timothy 4, 16, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, that's the teaching, continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself, save thyself, save thyself, and them that hear thee. Acts 2.40, and with many other words did they testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Romans 6.17, But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. Romans 10.16, this tells us what faith and obedience is all about. But they have not obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report. Believing is obeying. 2 Thessalonians 1.8, and flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 4.17, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Romans 16, 26, But now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandments of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. 1 Peter 1, 22, Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfaint love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Obey the truth. Brothers and sisters, it goes on and on and on and on and on. Grace is teaching us to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. Jesus' teachings are to turn away from this world and follow his teachings. We're saved by grace through faith, obedient faith, not the dead faith of devils. You cannot say you believe in Jesus and not do what he says. There's no difference between obeying and being saved by grace. There's no difference. You're saving yourself by letting grace teach you Grace is our teacher. Grace saves us by obeying the teachings and doctrines of Christ. Grace saves you, not of works of man, but of works of faithfulness, obedient works of living works of faith of Christ's Holy Spirit working in us, teaching us to turn away from ungodliness and live holy and righteous in Him. If you're living in Him, you're indeed saved by grace. If you're living any way you want, you're living in sin, and you're not listening to grace. You are rejecting grace. Let me tell you something, and I'm going to close with this. These teachers say you can continue to sin and still be saved. What they're teaching you is not only dead faith, but how to reject the grace of God, which is coming to teach you. They're teaching that... Um, that, that you don't have to repent and that you can reject the grace of God and continue to sin and you're going to be saved. What I want you to know if you're struggling with homosexuality or any other sin in your life, that if you are crying out to God in your weakness and you're turning away from that sin and you're reaching out to God to save you, to spare you, to teach you, you're on your knees, you're crying, you're not embracing the sin, you're turning away from the sin. And you're crying out to God to help you to walk holy. You're responding to grace. You're faithfully obeying. It, is, it doesn't matter if you're having struggles at that point because you've repented. You're repenting and you're repenting and you have repented from. But you have to keep pressing forward. You, you're not done yet. He's not perfected your, your faith yet. He's not perfected your works yet. If you continue to live faithfully obedient and repenting from your wickedness, God will perfect you. If you hold on until the end, that is the big challenge that we have. Holding on to our obedient faith in the process of being pruned and, and changed and letting go, continuing to let go and let go until God manifests His holiness and righteousness in us. That's living by faith. That is when they say it is you're saved by grace, through faith, not of your works. That's the kind of evidence that you are saved by grace through faith, not of the dead works of man, but of the living works of obedience by obeying the doctrine and teachings of Jesus Christ. I hope that this video helps you understand the difference and how to hear 
the kinds of teachings that are destructive out there and understand what the true biblical teaching of being saved is all about. I hope you understand what repentance is, what believing in God is, and what salvation looks like, and now what grace is all about. This can go into more depth, but I don't have time for this video. Keep watching the playlists, and thank you for your donations, brothers and sisters. You help make this ministry possible. Keep praying for me. I'm not perfect yet. I'm striving for perfection. I still got to crucify much flesh. I thank you guys. God bless you guys. And listen, the next time somebody says that they're saved by grace through faith and not of your works, and they're trying to say that you don't have to repent from sin or God's not looking for works of love and obedience in your life, if they're stuck on this idea that, that they don't have to have the works of love, the works of obedience, the works of faith, the works of grace, and they're stuck on this idea that they're saved by grace through faith and not of works, I want you to play this for them. I want you to play this very next clip that I'm about to show you again, play this part for them. For by grace are you saved through what? Faith! And faith means believing. Not of works, not of works, not of work. Even so, faith, if it have not works, is dead being alone. For by grace are you saved through what? Faith! Not of works, not of works. Faith. If it have not works, if it have not works, is dead. For by grace are you saved through what? Faith! Faith, 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 if it have not works, is dead. Saved through what? Faith! Saved through what? Faith! Faith, 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 not of works, not of works. If it have not works, is dead. If it have not works, is dead. A man may say that thou hast faith. Saved through what? Faith! A man may say that thou hast faith. Saved through what? Faith! Faith! And I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. And I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works, without works, without works, is dead. For by grace are you saved through what? Faith! Not of works, not of works. But wilt thou know, O vain man, O vain man, that faith without works, without works, is dead. Was not Abraham our father justified by works? Justified by works? when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar. For by grace are you saved through what? Faith! Not of works, not of work. Seeth thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. For by grace are you saved through what? Faith! Not of works, not of works. By works, by works was faith made perfect. Faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, saith, Abraham believed God. For by grace are you saved through what? Faith. And faith means believing. The scripture was fulfilled, saith, Abraham believed God. And faith means believing. Abraham believed God. And faith means believing. By works was faith made perfect. And faith means believing. By works was faith made perfect. Abraham believed God. And it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God.